Emma likes apples and bananas. Good x1 represents apples and good x2 represents bananas. She has the budget M to buy apples and bananas for the price of P1 and P2. Her utility function for both goods are given with the utility of x1, x2 is equal to x1 raised to the power of 3 tenth multiplied by x2 raised to the power 7 tenth. Find the optimal consume bundle that optimizes her utility. From the given text, we derive the equations that are needed to solve that problem. The utility function is already given, which we can see here. And further, we need to derive, to derive the budget constraint, which we do see here. P1 multiplied by X1 plus P2 multiplied by X2 is equal to M. What we want to do mathematically is to maximize x1 and x2 with the given utility function and with respect to subject to p1 x multiplied by x1 plus p2 multiplied by x1 equal to m. Using the Lagrange method, we can set up now our objective function, which we can see here with three arguments is equal to x1 raised to the power of 3 tenths multiplied by x2 raised to the power of 7 tenths minus lambda and lambda can be seen as a shadow index for the scarcity of a good and then we do have here the budget constraint and with three arguments we need to have three partial derivations and we start with the first one with respect to x1, this delta with respect to x1, and that is 3 divided by 10 multiplied by x1, and 3 tenths minus 1 is minus 7 tenths multiplied by x2, raised to the power of 7 tenths, nothing changed here, minus, and then we do here see, we do see here 1 x1, and that leads to minus lambda p1, and that should be equal to 0. We do the same for x2, delta l with respect to x2, and then we do have um, 7 tenths. I write it here because then I do have both fractions close to each other, which is a good reason. I'll show you in a second why. And x1 does not change at all. And then we check x2, and 7 tenths minus 1 is minus 3 tenth and then minus lambda p2 is equal to zero and then last but not least we do it also for the lambda with respect to lambda and then and that's actually the budget constraint and solve it first for set it equal to zero first minus m so that also should be equal to zero now there are many ways to solve these three new equations my suggestion is to divide let's call this one one and two one by two which leads to a huge fraction that looks like this which is easy to solve at first it does not look easy to solve but it but uh, uh, it's actually pretty easy and now you see why i put the seven tenths in front we see here two fractions right and that can be solved as 
3 divided by 10 multiplied by 10 divided by 7 and that is 1 1 3 divided by 7 so that's the first part the next step is to see okay we do we have here x1 and here and that is x1 minus raised to the power of 7 minus 7 tenth divided by x1 raised to the power of 3 tenth and that is actually equal to x1 raised to the power of minus 7 tenth minus 3 tenth and that is x1 raised to the power of minus 1 and that is 1 divided by x1 right and then we do have here 1 divided by x1 so and then we do see here x2 and x2 over here we do the same for x2 and to solve this x2 raised to the power of 7 10 now be careful plus 3 10 and that is x2 raised to the power of 1 and that's actually x2 then we do have x2 1 and then lambda and lambda that cancels out anyway is equal to p1 p2 right and this term here this term you do solve it also now for x2 Give me a second, I'll write it down here for you guys. And if everything, if something or everything, I don't know, the level is too fast for you to understand, don't worry. We have here um, written the problem as PDF, which you can download in the description box. It's in Google Drive folder, uh, so you can just download it and for, uh, print it and put it in your folder and study it. So we solve this equation for x2, but let's write it down first. x2, x1 is equal to p1, p2. And that's actually also the marginal rate of substitution it equals the price ratio. That's something you should know and write it down now. And now solve it for x2, which is first put the fraction on the other side, multiplied by 7, divided by 3. And then we have 7 divided by 3, p1, p2, multiplied by 1. Then we do have x2 equals 7, 3, 7 divided by 3 p1, p2, multiplied by x1. And the term for x2, we do now plug it in the budget constraint, or more precise, in the partial derivation with respect to lambda. We plug it in over here, right? And I will write it on this board for you, it's p1 x1 plus p2 and then 7 divided by 3 p1 p2 multiplied by x1 and I'll bring m on the other side is m. What we first see is p2 cancels out and then we have p1 multiplied by x1 plus 7 divided by 3 p1 x1 is equal to m. Now we have p1 multiplied by x1 here and the same also here, but we have this fraction over here which leads us to find the common denominator. We, can, we do have here an invincible 1 divided by 1. And to solve that, we need to find a common 
denominator which is three three multiplied by one is three plus seven p one x one equals m and this term you solve it now for x one and that's ten divided by three p one x one is m and x1 star already so we find if you solve it for x1 we do find already our first solution and x1 is now given with x1 star if you bring the fraction on the other side divided by p1 we do have 3 divided by 10 multiplied by m divided by p1 right and a nice move trick, if you still watch this video, is, you can also read on Wikipedia, is um, if the exponents of the objective function, or say in the, um, in the uh, utility function, add up to 1, we have constant scale of return, which means you find easily the solution for x2 star x2 star is then 7 divided by 10 because 3 divided by 10 plus 7 divided by 10 is 1 multiplied by m divided by p2 so and that's the optimal consume bundle for emma she should consume x1 star is equal to 3 tenths multiplied by m divided by p1 and x2 star is equal to 7 tenths multiplied by m p2. If you want to see that in a graph, you just graph, you just have to draw the budget constraint. And then we do have here our x1 star and x2 star. And on this point, we do have the indifference curve. And in this point, the budget constraint and the indifference curve, they do have actually the same slope, which is really important to know. Further, last hand, if we do have constant scale of return, that means for firms in the long run, they make zero profit. But that's just for further study. In the PDF, we also have uh, part B, which provides you some values, which you can plug in here. And then you see it, how much she should buy for bananas and apples, actually. Thank you very much. If you like this video, share and subscribe. And if you do have any questions, leave them below. I try to answer everything. And don't forget to download the PDF for free. Thank you very much.